So we are now on CSS and as you can see, it's an acronym. So the purpose of CSS is to make your website aesthetically pleasing. That's it. There are no other purposes. Feel free to read this definition, but basically it's just to make your site looks better. Uh, there are three ways at least to implement CSS. Inline, this is what we did in the last video. Although I claim that it was an HTML only, but actually technically it was HTML only. We use the inline styling in which we add an style attribute within an HTML tag. So while it was a CSS thing, it was written in HTML syntax. So technically it was HTML only, but it's kind of like an overlap because nowadays HTML and CSS are inseparable. So the next one is internal. And the last one is highlighted because that is the best practice. While HTML file has an extension of .html, CSS file has an extension of .css. All right, so we're gonna be creating a registration form. So we have CSS syntax and selectors, and it is best to demonstrate this one rather than reading all of this text. So let's head over to VS Code and create a new project. So I'm here on my desktop in this folder that I have been using since the start of this series. Follow along with me or have your own folder location. I am going to name this registration form. I'm going to click this button. And let's create our file here, index.html. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see a little bit better. And I'm going to generate the HTML template. And let's change the title to registration form. And let's go ahead and add here a div and an h1, okay? So the title here, we can basically just copy this text and place it over here. Next, we have a form. We already know that. And just ignore this uh, attribute right now. In fact, I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to have here a label. And this one will say name, okay? In a form, we have a name. And below that is an input. This is a type of text, right? And I'm going to wrap this with a div. I want to make sure that the closing div tag is here at the bottom. I'm going to highlight that and fix the indentation like so. You will find out later on the reason why we are wrapping that with a div. So right now, just copy this and paste that like three more times. This one is going to be the email, right? And here, it's fine to use a type of text for email because it is literally just a text, but there is also a type email. If we're going to use a type email, it's not anymore just any text. The browser itself or your application itself will be able to detect if the user have entered a correct email format. You know, you know what I mean? Like abc at gmail.com. Without the at sign and something like .com, .io, uh, that uh, UK or, or, or etc. The your application itself will be able to assist the user will produce some kind of like a notification or an error message to tell them oops this is not an email format. So this is also useful if you're gonna be asking for an email just uh, use email here even though it's fine to use text as well. So the next one is going to be the password and of course you know this already that we have to mask it or hide it and therefore the type is password. And normally for a registration form, we ask the user to re-enter their password, right? So you can have here, for example, confirm password on the next one. And the text is also going to be, I mean, the type is also going to be password. Uh, and I think we need another more for the button. All right, there you go. And we can now go ahead and delete both of this because what we need here is a button. And we can say register or sign up. If you are going to save this, right click here, open with live server, and let's wait for the browser to load. And there you have it. So we have everything to capture the name, the email, password, confirm password, and register. So now the styling. And like what I have uh, mentioned earlier, this one over here, linking to an external that says is file. So we're going to be creating a file here. We are going to name this styles.css, that's it. Now we have created a CSS file. Now we need to link this file into our HTML. And to link that, 
uh, we go ahead and put that over here above the title and we're going to be typing link. All right, very straightforward. After you type link, press tab on the keyboard and it will auto complete. Now, we type the file name over here. As you can see, it is now detected by, by VS Code automatically. Click on that and save our code. So for example, in our style that says, I'm going to say, I'm going to target the body. The body will actually target this one, okay? This body tag. And I'm going to say the background color, uh, let's say uh, aquamarine. If we're going to save that, as you can see, the color is applied on our project. And that is also means that our separate styles that says is file is actually linked into this project by using this line of code over here. If I'm going to comment that out by highlighting that and pressing control on the keyboard, hold it down, and then forward slash, it will comment out this code. It will disable the code. If we are going to save this, as you can see, the styling disappeared because the styles that says is, is not anymore linked to this file. So let's go ahead and highlight that again and control forward slash on the keyboard to activate that code. If we save our work, now we get the styling again applied on our form. All right, so we already know how to set the background color. We need to set a background image. So let's head over to Pixabay and search for an image that we want. I'm going to search here for something like a laptop. Okay, that is related to what we are learning, uh, web development. And I think this one is good. I'm going to click on this. And, as you, and now that we have downloaded the file, I'm, go, I'm gonna go ahead and go here, right click and copy this one, right? And heading over to VS Code, right click here, reveal in File Explorer so that we can be automatically be on the project location. I'm gonna right click here and then paste. And I'm going to press F2 on the keyboard so I can rename uh, this uh, file name easily. So I'm going to switch the view to large icons. As you can see, we have downloaded that particular image. And this is what we're going to use as a background with our current project. So let me go ahead and go back here. So as you can see right now, the image is already in our project. You can also click on that. It will also be previewed in VS Code. So in styles that says is, in order to set that as a background, instead of background color, we type here background image and then colon over here and we're going to type URL or uniform resource locator. So basically we want to tell the browser where is our image, okay? So now we're just going to type the file name laptop.jpg and we want to make sure that we put a semicolon here at the end. So save this. Now we have that background as you can see. So right now it doesn't look good that much right so we are going to improve it if i'm going to maximize and then zoom out by holding down the control key right and uh, the scroll button for the mouse i'm uh, uh, scrolling that as you can see the image uh, on at first it's kind of like it's only a single image but if we zoom out it multiplies so that's the one thing that we have to get rid first we can type here background repeat right over here and we are going to say no repeat we save this now we only have one image what we are trying to achieve right now that even if the user zoom in and out we want to make sure that this image remains the same uh, that it consumes the available uh, screen or the available size of the browser okay so we're going to say background size okay it's right over here and then we're going to say cover if we save that, now it covers entirely the available width of the browser or the screen. In our case, it's the browser. So we also want to make sure that uh, it's always at the center. Even though we know it's already filling up the screen, just to make sure, uh, we type here background position center. And then we're going to define now the height to 100 view height. There you have it. So. Upon saving this, as you can see, even if we zoom in and out, 
The only thing that is changing are the graphical elements over here, the text box, the button, but our background remains the same. All right, so let me put this at the side. Okay, so now we're gonna be going back to the display flex, the one that I've shown you last time. Uh, for the display flex, again, right now, the only thing that we have to know is we wanted to center all of these elements both vertically and horizontally, okay? So without declaring display flex, we will not be able to use or utilize the justify content center property and its values because this concept requires an entire video so that you will fully understand it. But right now, that's the only thing we have to know. In order to use this, we have to use display flex or type it in our code. I'm going to create a dedicated video just all about this one. Then we have a line item center over here. Okay, now there you have it. Everything is centered both ver vertically and uh, uh, horizontally. And if we are going to go back to our guide, here in CSS syntax and selectors. So for example, the first one is the type selector, the tag name. So this one, we know that registration form, this text is an H1 tag. So how do we target that? Just like what we did with the body, we target the body tag itself. We can type H1. And for example, the uh, font color or the color of the font, we type color over, over here and then red, for example, uh, see my colon here at the end. If we save that, now we have a red text. So that is what we mean by type selectors, the type of tag. Is it an H1, a button, an H2? So we can also do that with the button. For example, the button over here, uh, we only have one button, this register. Uh, that's the name of the HTML tag, which is this one. If we are going to set the background color to red, it will also be on red. So that is what we mean by type selectors. What is the class selectors? Class selectors is when we are going to add, so basically we're going to put a name on a particular element. For example, here, this div, we're going to say, we're going to add a class attribute. Again, don't worry about this term class. Uh, just know that we are naming this div. We are going to name this, for example, I will name this my underscore div. Now, we can copy that my div. In order to target a class, you have to use a period and then paste the name of the class. And for example, background color equals red as well. And as you can see, this one is has a background color of red. All right, so now let me just delete this button over here, okay? And uh, I wanted to show you that a class, if you have used it over here, you can also use that on another element class here, my dev. If we are going to save that, this element right here also has a background color of red because it has the same class name. And that is the CSS selector class. The last one is ID. All right, so the ID is basically just like the same thing with the class. Okay, let me put it here. We, we add an ID attribute. For example, this one is my underscore container. Okay, that's the name of our div or the ID. We can copy that, but instead of a dot or period, we use a pound sign and then open in curly brackets. Now we let's say, for example, background color is equals green. Now we have a green background for this particular div element. So what is the difference between class and ID? So unlike class, it is not recommended to use the same ID with another element. So if you're gonna be using like the same name, uh, name for elements, we have to use a class. Just know that if you're going to use an ID, use it only once, right? And that one is accompanied with a pound sign when you are coding that in CSS. All right, so how about this attribute over here? Uh, the asterisk, so the asterisk will target everything. So for example, I'm gonna type here asterisk and I'm going to type here, for example, uh, let's say the font color of everything is going to be blue, right? If we do that, as you can see, the colors are blue over here, okay? Uh, the reason that some texts are not blue, for example, this one, that is why it is called cascading style sheet. So it's targeting here at the top, okay, at the top, 
everything is blue, but it can be overwritten along the way. So for example, for the H1, I'm going to disable this code. Right now it's blue. So it's cascading. All this style will be applied universally, but somewhere along the way, you have specified certain elements to have certain types of color. That one will be applied. So it's cascading. That's the idea of cascading style sheet. So I think uh, that's the important concept that you have to learn right now, all of this. And I hope that makes sense. And I hope that you were able to get some knowledge and insight and also this one. So what we're going to do now is to complete this project. So, and we will try our best to make this look good as possible because that is the only point why we are using CSS. So let me go ahead and delete all of this. And in our HTML, instead of my div, uh, we can come up something descriptive. For example, this is a group of elements, right? So we can uh, name this form group, for example. And we can copy this because we wanted to apply the same styling here and here. So all of these divs, uh, we can put some spacing to make it more readable. So everything here has a class of form group, right? And the uh, ID over here, my container, we can simplify this just container, okay? So let's go ahead and work with this container first. So I'm gonna copy that, head over to CSS. Since it is an ID, we're gonna be using a pound sign. And maybe we can change the background color. Let's try typing here like a yellow. Okay, now you, we have a yellow background or you can have a hover over here and choose a different color. Now we have something like, for example, this color uh, white. And if you want that to be transparent, you can add here comma, for example, 0 0.5, and it will be transparent like so. So you can adjust the values maybe around 7 or 8. Uh, if you set it to 1, it will be opaque. So let me put this back maybe around 0 0.7. I think I'm happy with that. Now let's add what we learned about padding. Uh, we can have, for example, 60 pixels. Uh, let me just zoom in ar to around 100% over here, uh, the default view for a browser. Okay, so padding 60 pixels. Uh, let's try to add some border radius, uh, 8 pixels. And let's set the width over here to around 500 pixels. There it is. And maybe we can target the H1 over there. So we type H1 and the font size, we can actually change that to around 24 pixels. The next one that I'm going to do is I want to set that to center, text align center. There you have it. And the bottom margin, we can also set that uh, to a certain value, for example, 20 pixels. You can increase the value to around 40 if you want some spacing between this title and the next element over here. So after H1, we can now go ahead, for example, this form group right over here because we don't have spacing right we need a little bit of breathing room between these widgets or elements so we can copy uh, this form group we can just copy only one and we know that the styling will be applied to this to this one to this to this and that okay so since it's a class we use a period okay curly brackets and then let's say margin bottom uh, for example uh, 15 pixels i think that's good right you can, you can set that to 10 if you want, but I think you get the point. And what else uh, that we're going to be styling? Right now, uh, aside from the class, we know that we have multiple labels, right? We can target the label itself by just typing here label, and we can do anything with it. For example, uh, the display, we can set it to block, and that what will happen. I will have a separate dedicated video about display block, display flex, okay? We need like a dedicated video to fully understand. Right now, just follow along with me, code along with me. Uh, the reason that we're doing this is to make sure that this label stays on the top of this text box. Uh, like if we're going to disable this, we get this type of format. If we are going to do that, we get this type of format. All right. So the next one is going to be input. 
So basically right now what we are doing is uh, we are selecting those elements using their tag name, the label tag, now it's the input tag, and we can say the uh, width is around 100%. We want to make sure that the width of this will consume also the entire available width of its parent. So let's save that, and there you have it, all of the inputs. All right, so how about the padding? Padding over here, we can set. Maybe this is not necessary, but I'll just show you that you can do that as well to make this input larger. And maybe the font size, you can also do that with, with that input. Like the font size that we type here, we, we have something like that. You can change the size of that by using this. So for example, let me exaggerate that to 28 pixels. And if we type here, so you can see it's bigger. So maybe just set that to around 14 pixels. And I think that's good. So since we have applied, I think for the asterisk right here, let me just comment this out. So again, highlight that and control forward slash to disable the code. All right, so the next one is going to be the button, right? So for the button, we can say the width is also 100% so that it will take up the entire available width of its parent. And let's add some padding. Okay, and how about font size also? You, we can also do that with button. Let's see around 16 pixels. I think that's fine. And let's change the background color. Maybe something like a blue, but we will pick manually a different one by just hovering over here. And maybe we can select uh, maybe a green button. Uh, maybe something like this. All right, I think that's, let's try to choose uh, something brighter. All right, I think that's fine. And let's get rid of the uh, border because it looks better like so. Then when we hover over to a button, notice my cursor right now. We can actually change that to a cursor and then pointer. Now if we hover on it, uh, the hand is, I mean the arrow is replaced by a hand icon. Okay, now heading over here, there's like a um, pseudo class selector. One example of that is hover. Uh, we're going to be using focus later on, but right now we, I think we can do the hover. Hover is like when we say button, when we hover on it, maybe when we hover on it, we can copy this and change the color into something uh, like a more greens into this. So now if we hover on it, as you can see, the color changes. All right, so now we know that the input, we set that to 100%. The width, we set that 100% for the button as well. But why is it that, you know, uh, they are not the same? Uh, there's something like, uh, we can actually do that over here with this uh, asterisk. Uh, the, the one thing that, I, that we're going to do right now, just, just code along with me, but I'm going to create a separate video to explain how this works. It's called the box sizing. Okay, what we're trying to do now is because this button over here, we know that we set the width to 100%, but why is it that it's not consuming, you know, just like what we have here in this input boxes. In fact, the input boxes itself, as you can see, the width of the padding here is not, is not the same. So if we're going to type here box sizing and then border box, if we save that, as you can see, it's, it actually solves the problem, right? Now we have equal padding at the right, equal padding at the left, and the button is the same width with the input boxes. But again, we need a separate video on this one. I'm going to explain this in detail, so make sure to subscribe in this channel, uh, like it. Uh, that will help me a lot, and uh, that will be very, very much appreciated. So at this point, I think we have achieved our goal in creating the registration form. So save your work, uh, maximize this one, and I hope that this has been informative for you. See you in the next one.